Hello, everyone, and welcome to the first ever Building Construction Sciences Virtual Meet the Grad event. My name is Dan Robichaud, and I'm a professor here at Mohawk College. It is my pleasure to be the host and moderator for today's alumni and industry panel discussion titled Architecture, Drafting and Design. First, I just want to say a thank you to all the people who worked on this behind the scenes, and also thank you to the Mohawk students who have joined us and the recent graduates that are here with us today. We hope you enjoy hearing about the career journeys of these panelists and their thoughts on how job seekers can engage in the current marketplace. So before we begin our discussion, I'm just gonna introduce the, the three Mohawk alumni that have joined us here today. Although I guess I could technically say four because I've graduated from Mohawk as well. So the first person uh, in no particular order is Jai Hamilton. He's a graduate of the Architectural Technology Program. Jai is a manager and associate at Walter Fetty, a local integrated architecture and engineering firm serving the GTA in Southwestern Ontario. Next, we have Jesse Mays. She is a recent graduate of the Architectural Technology Program. She joins us today from BLR Drafting and Design, a residential design firm located in Fergus, Ontario. And we're also joined by her colleague and fellow Mohawk grad, Brienne. She's a graduate of the Architectural Technology Program at Mohawk College. So I'd just like to say, or at first I'd like to say a big thank you to our alumni panelists for taking the time out of their busy day to be here to share their experiences with the students. I look forward to hearing more about their career paths and lessons learned. I have a series of questions that I'm gonna ask you can answer in any particular order, um, you know, if you need to pause. Um, hopefully they're not too difficult. I know when we have the jury presentation at the end of the architectural technology program, the questions are a lot more difficult than they should be today. So the first question, after graduating, you know, simply what has your career path been? What value has your Mo Mohawk education provided to you in the workforce or in your career. So I guess I'll, I'll start with Jai and then um, we can go from there. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so firstly, I would say that I think my Mohawk experience gave me a bit of leverage knowing that uh, the program is uh, over and above some of the other schools that I'm familiar with as well. Um, so I started out uh, after graduating as a technologist and I uh, got hired at a small architecture firm uh, that was local to me in Barrie. And uh, from that point, I, I kind of graduated myself um, wanting to professionally advance. So I moved into uh, a technical office manager role um, and then further into project management, BIM management, contract admin, uh, all that fun stuff. We were a, a smaller firm, so I wore many hats. Now moving to a much larger firm of uh, over 200 people with offices in Kitchener and Hamilton and I am the BIM manager of multi-disciplines now. So less hats, more people, it's a bit of a trade-off, but uh, I'm happy to, to make the change and uh, get back to this area in, in Ontario. So yeah, thanks for the question. Oh, that's excellent. And I mean, that even kind of touched base on some of the future questions that I plan on asking you. Um, I don't know if, if Jesse or Brianna wants to go next. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I love that Mohawk provided the co-op program because that is how I got the job today. So I did two of my co-op programs at BLR Drafting and Design, and then I started in January 2020 full-time. So I really liked how Mohawk prepares you for that. And other than that, they just give a really good education system that I found, like you said, excels over other schools. Oh, that's great to hear. No one's paying you or bribing you to say these things. Right? <laughs> nope. <laughs> Jesse, did you have anything to add? Um, well, most of my points have been taken, but <laughs> I would say that the thing I most value about the Mohawk College education would be um, how much like team building skills you learn because in six semester you work with the group and try to um, complete a huge project, which is uh, such a great thing to relate to real life. And in this uh, industry, we work in big groups. We work 
um, as teams and communication is huge. So I think that was a huge um, aspect that I took from Mohawk College that really helped me grow my communication skills and um, helped me just grow as a person with working with team, like working in teams and my team building aspect. Oh, that's great. Okay, so that kind of leads as a segue into my next question. Oh. <laughs> um, if any, what are some of the soft skills that you may have learned in your profession um, at Mohawk College? So not like just the technical, and I know like I really like structures, but um, structures was a hard course and, and I learned a lot in structures, but you know, maybe like presentation skills or like you said, working in your groups um, was there any like soft skills that you you have learned at Mohawk College or even after graduation and, and working in the rural world? So I'll, I'll go back to Jai. Um, although maybe well maybe we should sneak it like Jai, Bree, Jesse, and then the next question maybe we should go in reverse order. You know what I mean? But okay. this is all uh, this is all a learning curve. But we'll let Jai go first. I just I don't want Jesse to to feel not left out, but that all her great ideas are taken beforehand. <laughs> I'm going to steal already Jesse's sentiment. Uh, <laughs> so I think that communication skills are some of the soft skills that you need to develop, whether it's in school or outside of school. Uh, those are huge for your successes going forward. Um, it's not just email or hiding behind a screen. You sometimes need to call somebody or have a face-to-face -face meeting and actually get your yes. point across. Uh, you know, it's too easy to just send an email off and and it, it can also be misinterpreted, right? If we send an email that we might think is perfectly fine, someone on the other end might receive it as snarky or, or uh, curt. We don't want that to happen. So uh, pick up the phone, you know, resolve things um, face to face often when we could. Uh, that's, uh, yeah, those soft skills of communication are, are huge for sure. Excellent. Yeah, I, someone told me like when you read or write an email, like, you know, there shouldn't be any tone of voice in there but sometimes you take it with a certain I guess take it with a grain of salt but uh, yeah. Brianna if you have anything to add I would feel the same about that um, I'm someone who gets very nervous talking on the phone and I've just gotten so used to it working here because someone calls you and you're like well I gotta pick up I can't ignore them <laughs> so <laughs> you get used to just talking on the phone and getting to know people and it just you get someone used to someone's voice when you've emailed them, emailed them so many times that you now have like a voice to match the email. And I don't know, it's more like comforting when you email someone, <laughs> in my opinion. So definitely yeah, important. No, that's great. Yeah. Uh, Jesse, did you have any um, skills? I would say like time management and flexibility is probably a good soft skill to like that we learned. Because you oh, constantly excellent. are on different projects, but you have to manage your time to be able to work on all of them and get them all completed within the deadline. That's huge, yeah, right? No, that's excellent. I try to, you know, inform the students. They have lots of tests and due dates. Um, time management is is big. And there's oh, yeah. no no teacher to not say send a, a cry email saying, you know, sir, I missed the deadline or can we extend it a week? But in the real world, uh, a deadline is a deadline. Exactly. Yeah, Especially our, right now, it's so busy. Our clients don't like to pay us when we miss uh, miss. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah or a penalty. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. so we'll go the opposite way, but um, the next question, and I think I heard it in some of the answers, like they're going to ask if you see any like upcoming trends in the sector or construction industry. But when I was a student, I remember we learned AutoCAD and something called MicroStation, and MicroStation is still used, but not very often. And now we teach AutoCAD and something called Revit. So um, if Jesse, if you have any thoughts on, you know, any trends you see in the industry or if yeah. you can attest to, to what I just said. Um, so right now in our company, we are strictly on AutoCAD, but I know in the near future, we are wanting to expand our um, platforms to either Revit or SoftPlan. So I see like, in the near future, Revit is going to become really big, and a lot of companies that are now using um, AutoCAD will switch to Revit completely. And what about like I think when you were a student, 
because you graduated recently. Did yep. you use the program Lumion? Yes. Oh, yeah. We use the mini one too. And do you have, is there a program out there that you use now for like 3D renderings or? Um... No, we don't do our in house uh, 3D renderings here. Okay. Just yes. out of curiosity. Yeah. Uh, Brianna, do you have any um, trends that you see in the construction industry or residential? Um, well, it's mainly what Jesse said. That's all we really see. And plus, we're strictly AutoCAD. <laughs> 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 so, but yeah, we find that builders use a lot of soft plan and we deal with a lot of builders. So that's why okay. we kind of want to transition to soft plan. And I feel like a lot of people are used to soft plan than Revit right now. I know a lot of people are switching over, but I think soft plan is kind of where we're heading. But I have Revit heard soon. of soft plan in the, in the past from, from various students. Yeah. Jai, do you have any, uh, yeah. In the big bad world of construction <laughs> management, project management, Absolutely. is there any trends? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. So uh, with my BIM management uh, background right now, um, I'm we're strictly Revit. So part of my job was to come on and onboard uh, a firm of over 200 people with with Revit, make sure that we're proficient in in all disciplines, uh, from mechanical, electrical, structural, and architecture as our four key disciplines. Uh, so we use Revit strictly. Um, and we're using it now a lot more sophisticated than we uh, originally were, or you know, a lot of other industry professionals are. And I think for us, I'm seeing trends way beyond just the adoption of that. We're looking at now automation. Uh, we're using things like Dynamo, um, Python coding, um, a Grasshopper, thing, things like that that are you know buzzwords or were buzzwords at one point they're now certainly forefront for for a lot of our technology advancements well that's interesting because i'm not trying to like say that you graduated a long time ago because i remember <laughs> you as a student so i feel much older but did you learn revit at mohawk because i'm thinking not no nope, we did not did you you know take it upon yourself or take uh uh, a class at night school and it didn't have to be Mohawk night school. It could have been another institution. That's not as good. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, um, that's uh, uh, interesting. No. So when I went, uh, when I graduated, you're right. We were still just strictly AutoCAD from Mohawk. Um, but uh, our, the firm I went to was using a, a program called GDS, which nobody had ever heard of. And even in my interview, I'm like, listen, if this is what is predicated on me getting the job, I don't know what you guys are talking about. And they're like, that's oh, okay. You don't have to, we're going to use, you're, you're going to use AutoCAD. And uh, we did that for maybe a couple of years, two years maybe. And then uh, realizing with eyes wide open that Revit was the way uh, the industry was going. So uh, I took it upon myself again to, to learn that with a, a few other individuals at our firm and roll that out to, uh, to the entire practice. And then it's grown from there. So uh, yeah, my interest was, was peaked in, in college maybe, but it was only just a, a new thing. Uh, for the industry. So um, now it's becoming very commonplace and it's more and more uh, that we work with strictly Revit consultants as well if we do any outside work. Well, I know like we have something called a PAC meeting where it's like a program advisory committee. Um, and I don't know how many times they meet a year. I'm thinking it's like two or three times. Yeah. And a lot of the people on there promote Revit, but there's still some that say like, whoa, hang on a second. Like we still need the students to learn about AutoCAD and, and have some AutoCAD skills and yeah so I, I would agree and I think so also from my experience I was a part-time professor at uh, at Georgian College for three and a half four years um, doing architectural drafting and design so teaching that but it was funny for the for the first one and two semester courses I was going back to Georgian to teach AutoCAD but every day at the office, I was doing Revit nonstop. Like I, I had to kind of relearn speaking two languages uh, because it is a little bit different. But for me, I think that was uh, eye-opening. But the students were clamoring at that point to make sure that it was it was Revit and get us Revit and everyone says Revit. So that, that's my point of uh, perspective anyways. Yeah, yeah. Well, even like when I was a student, okay. So just to go back in history, when I was in high school, we were on drafting tables and there was like one computer at the back of the room with AutoCAD. And then I went to Mohawk, which I loved. Um, and I didn't really know AutoCAD, but I learned it and I love AutoCAD. 
now it's Revit, but with AutoCAD, like I would have one hand on the keyboard and one hand on the mouse and, and I would memorize like the keyboard shortcuts to try and make myself not faster, but um, you know, speed is uh, an asset when completing drawings in the real world. Mm -hmm. And to go to Revit, I don't find that like, I'm memorizing keyboard shortcuts. It's more like clicking icons, like uh, like word and like ribbons. You know what I mean? Yeah, very much so. I still promote the keyboard shortcuts because it's universal. If you can learn that, you're speedy as well as you can go to any machine. If anyone's buggered up the the ribbon, you can still function. And for me, oh. I, need, I need to do that. So um, I can send you a cheat sheet with all the keyboard shortcuts if you want. <laughs> Okay, I didn't even know Revit had the keyboard shortcuts. I just, I figured it would take me so long to try and find the ribbon or if you remember an old Etch-a-Sketch of someone like shook it to restart, right? Or Scrabble, like just put all the letters all over the place, but yeah, excellent. That's great. Okay, so um, we only have a couple more questions and I don't know, like eventually they're gonna open up questions to students. So, um, you know, if your students on the line, start thinking up your questions that you might wanna ask these individuals. So the next question is what resources should new graduates use to find work in the field? You know, people, places to turn to. And then just before I ask Jai uh, what his thoughts are, I know me personally, I check Indeed all the time and it's not for myself. Like I'm, I'm looking on Indeed for the students. And um, I think I, I did it for Brianna and Jesse's year, but I had a real difficult time last year but we just, we switched learning management plans from eLearn to my Canvas. And so I used to be able to go in and mass email all the past like students. So like if, if they graduated in December, 2020, I would say, keep checking your Mohawk email for a year and any jobs that land on my desk, I'm gonna send out a mass email, may the best student get the job. And like, sometimes there was no jobs. And then all of a sudden, like, after three or four months, like one day I'll have seven jobs land on my desk that, you know, need filling or need good capable graduates to, to be employed there. Um, but is there any other, any other resources that you can think of or places or people to turn to? And I mean, there's the whole, sometimes it's not what you know, sometimes it's who you know, right? So. Yeah. I was about to say that it's, yeah, word of mouth, honestly. And then contacting yourself. That's how I emailed BLR. I just emailed Bernie, which is my boss. And that's how I got an interview and got a job. We'll go oh, up nice. to start. <laughs> but just yeah. knew someone that knew the job. What are your thoughts, Jesse, on that? Yeah, like I used to get this job, I used Indeed. I think Indeed is a really good uh, resource because you can filter through certain jobs. Like I put in architectural design and this job popped up and I applied and that's how I got it. So I really think indeed um, getting connections through your co-ops that you receive through Mohawk College is a really good um, opportunity to make some connections there um, and get hired up in that company or get hired after you graduate. Well, you, you made a good point there with, um, you know, maybe you want to get into like a big company and then let's say start start at the bottom and now we're here but yeah. you know work your way up the corporate ladder right get some experience get your feet wet yeah um and move up the corporate ladder and and you can apply even to um sometimes they have like internal postings first before yeah. they go external yeah any so, other comments Jai? yeah i think uh, i think the co-op um is a, is a great offering through mohawk as well um and I think people think about it always as a, as a, a pro, like I'm gonna find a job. Uh, one other thing that's very positive is that you can find out what you don't like to do. And it's only yep. a four month <laughs> co-op and, and you know, you turn away and, and that's fine. But you've learned a very valuable lesson and not wasted a lot of, uh, a lot of time and resources doing so. Um, for us though, I mean, we've got walterfitty.com slash careers you can find uh, on there, but I think the majority of them are also posted on either LinkedIn or Indeed or Monster, Glass seat, glass Ceiling or whatever they're, they're talking about. Glass Door, I don't know which I think one it's it is. Glass Door, but. Yeah. Glass Ceiling is a different one, don't go to. Uh, but um, yeah, I think uh, LinkedIn is very popular, uh, especially if you if you got yourself a, a decent profile, people will eventually pursue you as well. 
Um, but uh, there's our website is always up to date with postings and what we've got uh, available. And I think there are a few opportunities. Uh, I'm not sure about recent graduates or not, but. Well, and we always used to joke too at the college because um, like the construction industry is kind of a small, it's a big small world where like a lot of people know each other, um, they have contact. So, you know, I think last I read it made up like 18 or 20% of Canada's GDP, but there is an awful lot of uh, people that know each other in the construction industry. So there is. make sure you do a good job wherever you are. <laughs> okay so the last question and then i might have to you know talk for five minutes or so but i got i got lots of stories to share so that's not a problem <laughs> but um here they have it written as you know if you had like one piece of advice or knowledge that you could you know share with our audience uh that you wish you had known before you graduated from moha college but i i prefer to kind of say it more like if you have any tips on making it in the real world so if you have a, a piece of advice or or knowledge or some kind of tips that would help maybe some of our listeners I don't think this is like a blog but um you know what I mean <laughs> so Jai if you want to go ahead first and and then we'll go with uh, Brianna and Jesse after that no no sure. rush take your time I'm gonna have a drink of water sure I can I feel like I've been doing a lot of talking so um <laughs> but it doesn't ever stop me usually um, when I think what I would have liked to know, or I guess is maybe a piece of advice is that, uh, although you're, you're very strained going through school and, you know, like we just were talking about six semesters, uh, you know, very busy and a trying time. Um, as soon as you put your foot into the, the office and, and you've got your, your, your real job, that's when the learning really begins and it doesn't stop. You continue learning every day. And if you're not, something's wrong. Um, I think that's uh, an opportunity that uh, a lot of people don't really may maybe understand. They think the finish line is college, but that's not the case. You, you got to keep going. Uh, the one benefit to that, though, and especially with the architectural industry and the program that Mohawk offers is um, it's a very broad industry. So even if you have a focus on something niche, like we were talking about rendering engines earlier, if you like to literally just render all day, uh, we might have a spot for you. You know, like that, that's something that is applicable and you don't have to be a jack of all trades, uh, you can you can dwindle down and focus on on one element if that's something that interests you for sure. Yeah, I definitely agree on that. I was so nervous going into a job, but as long as you're eager to learn, everyone's willing to teach is what I find. And you may think that they're not, but they are, and they actually really do love it. Like I'm feeling it now when you have like a co-op in, like we have a co-op in now, and I feel like it's so fun to teach because then you're also teaching yourself, but you're like, oh yeah, I really do know this you know, as you're teaching someone else. So it's just, you're, every day you're learning something new. Like literally everyone's learning something new every day in this industry, which is amazing. So don't be nervous going into a job, that's for sure. It's easy to say, don't be nervous, but even- uh, I know. <laughs> even with this, like I was a little bit nervous um, because like a long time ago we had Meet the Grad and the Arnie with the microphone and I found that was like nerve wracking. Um, people are usually afraid of public speaking, but I find this is a little bit more casual, a little bit more comfortable than than standing up on stage under like a big spotlight. So, oh, for sure. Just um, I would say my piece of advice um, would be take advantage of your co-ops um, because in my situation, I didn't know if I wanted to do and my co-ops in commercial or residential. So I took advantage and I tried to apply. Uh, myself to ones that were for commercial and then the next semester apply ones that were residential and then I got my foot in both and I was, could pick which one I was more attached to so obviously I was more attached to residential but it was such a great opportunity because I could see on both sides which one I wanted to go into so if you're not um, like 100% sure which one co-ops is such a great opportunity because you're going to learn so much either direction and it's going to benefit you in the long run because then in the future you know you're going to be happy with whatever if you took commercial or residential career path yeah no that's excellent and even um like with the students i try to i try to create a, a form because even though this is like our first virtual kind of meet the grad event 
um, we had an in-person meet the grad event for over like 20 years. So I tried to create a document where I put down the list of names and um, to inform the students like what companies usually attend and that that list has grown to like 100 or 150 different companies that have come out to meet the grad and there's I think 15 or 17 companies today at the employer booths which hopefully the students will be able to go and, and visit afterwards but I'd also like to make a list of just all the different jobs like as I think Jai kind of mentioned earlier like you know you could do renderings you could be in the field you could do surveying you could do estimating you could I'm not good at a salesperson but you could be a salesperson um you could be you could be your own business owner like a lot of our, our grads have started their own business so that is uh, an opportunity for people as well and there's project management there's scheduling there's um even some people that like renovate or i'm not i'm not very handy like if if something went wrong in my house i better phone someone to fix it but you know some of our students are very handy and they can they can build like an addition or or um actually <laughs> they can like draw it up and then like physically complete the job um but there's just there's so many jobs out there it i just like usually we have like open house and in I like that the students like from high school show up, but usually it's the parents that are asking all the questions. Um, and they're like, you know, if, if a student goes into architecture, technology, architectural technician, civil technology, civil technician, you know, what kind of jobs are out there in the field? And, and literally there's like a huge list. I can't even memorize them all off the top of my head to, to inform the parents to make a good decision for their kid very broad and luckily yeah. now uh we're still hiring and growing right so th i think that's uh something to to be said about the industry at, at this point to uh, stave what's what's currently going on yeah. well and like the construction makes up you know if it makes up 20 percent of canada's gdp or or like there's always going to be building roads or bridges or houses or new buildings or um sometimes like you know there'll be like a lull in one kind of discipline and then another discipline will like take its place, but. Yep. All right, any other, uh, I don't really have any other questions. Um, I don't know if, if we still have like 10 minutes. I, I haven't seen any questions in the chat to answer. If anyone wants to message in the chat or I don't know if they're allowed to unmute them themselves or not, or. Yeah, Dan, folks can, uh, um, if they, they'd like to uh, unmute, definitely, they can, or they can add their questions to the chat for sure. Um, I had actually a question. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, um, I wondered, uh, you know, you kind of talked about where you got to here, and we're kind of hearing what you're doing currently. Um, do you have thoughts on like, where you're going? Like, so kind of like, what's next for you as you like continue your career journey? Oh, that's a good one. Mm. <laughs> I, um, just me? for the record, well, for the record, I still don't know what I want to do, but go on. Go on. <laughs> um, for me, I would say that this is like my dream job is working with like building custom homes, doing production homes. I'd say like this is where I saw myself going after I finished school. So I would say I'm where I want to be, um, but that's as of right now. <laughs> well, congratulations for landing Thanks. your dream job. <laughs> I'd say it's the same for me because I did do commercial one co-op. I didn't like it, so I went into residential, and I absolutely love it. So I know that this is definitely the industry I'm going to stay in. Again, with residential, there's so many different routes you can go as well with commercial. But right now I'm loving it. And this is what I want to do for a long time. That's for sure. <laughs> well, that's good. That's a good positive message. Yeah. Those Guy, are, anything from the, constr the construction side, you loving it? Those are both very warm and fuzzy. I, all I got to <laughs> say is, yeah, I think, I think as well, uh, the 
the so we talked about the breadth of the architectural industry, but as well the breadth of the projects that I, I've worked on over the course of, uh, of my experiences in commercial institutional uh, have been have been pretty awesome as well. I, I've been fortunate enough to work on a few rec centers, which is where I spend the majority of my childhood uh, growing up playing hockey, and that was to me harkened back to uh, something that I really enjoyed as well. Just like uh, uh, the girls are talking about uh, with residential, everyone you know lives somewhere hopefully. Uh, and so that's very uh, touching to not understand that you're you're doing that uh, custom for someone. I think it was the same for me with rec centers, just uh, being able to impact the community that way was awesome, as well as a lot of hospital work and, and things like that that are uh, pretty great, pretty great impact uh, over the course of the years. Well, just before I get to the question in the chat, which I think Stacy wrote up, um, you said hockey, and I just wanted to throw it out there because this is on record. I am a retired ball hockey goalie, but I went out on a 46 and 0 win streak, just, you know, for the record. <laughs> nobody, nobody can doubt him either. Uh, Cause this goes back to my graduating year, uh, 0, 06, 07 <laughs> ball hockey uh, goalie right there, Dan Rome show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to say um, this little closing remark. I want to say thank you to everyone. Thank you for the people who organize this behind the scenes. Thank you very much for our panelists for being here. Thank you for the students and uh, some of the past grads um, who have shown up to, you know, not say ask questions that we ask them to ask, but um, provide some, some questions. Uh, once again, my name is Dan Robichaud and thank you very, very much for attending this virtual online Meet the Grad. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. Thanks all.